come up with it indeed. What is up, everybody, and welcome into Studio B. Hey, <laughs> Studio B. The B Squad, apparently, uh, in, in Studio B today for an interesting um, DNVR Nuggets podcast because today we got to go to practice. Yes. It's two days in a row we got to go to practice. We're going to talk all about it, how weird it was to be, how great it was to be back, how strange it was to be back, all of those things. And then, of course, answer your mailbag questions. We're presented, as always, by DraftKings Sportsbook, America's top-rated sportsbook app. Use promo code DNVR when you sign up. You can bet on real-life hockey this Wednesday if you want to. We have our Avalanche, uh, our first Colorado Avalanche watch party. I highly recommend you come on down for that on Wednesday. It should be a riot. Um, but, of course, we're going to get into some nugget stuff. I'm joined by the man with the wind behind his hat. It's Harrison Wind. I, I, I don't like Studio B more than Studio A. It's close, though. It's, it's close. It's really? closing the gap. It's no. closing the gap. I like it for this. Studio B feels just way more homey. Really? Way more intimate. Well, you are my It's homie. like I'm really chatting with, with you and, we, we're and, homies, the, right? and the good people out there. We're homies. We are. Of there course. It is. I made him say that. Yeah. He was I love it. Studio B, though. <laughs> Big fan. Um, but honestly, the thing I don't like about it is you, during a game, I don't like being here because you can't see the bar. You oh, can't sh- see the oh, crowd. Oh, sure, that, sure. That's sure. the reason why. Yeah. But sure, not for a post game show. For a podcast, though? For why sure. Not? Why not? Um, so later on, we're going to answer some mailbag questions. Super producer Kale has curated all of those for us. I know you guys sent some really good ones, but I want to get in first about us being back at Ball Arena. They had practice yesterday. They had practice today. Um, and I know this is this is like a little meta. I know you guys don't don't get to go back here, but you've been at, at the arena a few times. You've done this or that. But a practice. What are we talking about? Not a game. <laughs> we're talking about practice. Yeah. Practice is like the real uh, access in my opinion, because right. a game, there's so much going on and players are you know emotional. They're giving you this or that. You got the podiums or whatever, but practice is where you get to actually go and be around them and just see how they are acting in a, in a casual environment. And mm-hmm. I'm telling you, it's a weird thing. 18 months. We have not been there to be able. I mean, I know you're at training camp, but to be actually yeah. be there and kind of see them just, you know, reminds you like, Oh yeah, there's so many different layers and, and you almost get a new, for me, I almost got a new appreciation for just getting to be around the team again. I wonder what the players think. Like they went two years without any media well, around, if and Jokic now all of a is, sudden we're just there again. If Jokic's mood is any indication, he's like not thrilled about it, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean he's just in preseason training camp mode. <laughs> he's he's def- deep in preseason training camp mode. He's definitely deep. In yeah, it. but I, I do wonder what the players think. They're like, oh, these guys again. Like, I thought we got rid of these guys for good. <laughs> no, we're still around. We're still here. We're still covering the team. Yeah. Um. The other observation takeaway that you get right when you walk in the Nuggets practice gym, particularly during training camp and preseason, is how crowded it is. Because usually, you know, you've got maybe 15 guys, maybe just 13 guys with the two two way guys, maybe in the G League during the season, plus coaches. Now you have 20 players in that gym right now. Plus a ton of coaches, trainers, staffers, everyone. They've got like six hoops coming down uh, from all right. different ways. So everybody has a hoop to shoot on. It's a it's crowded packed. gym. It's a packed. But it definitely gives off the training camp vibe. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I would say, though, I would characterize both yesterday and today as positive vibes around the team. And I didn't know how it would be because the Nuggets are 0 3 in the training camp or in the preseason. I know that doesn't mean a whole lot, although we should maybe discuss on whether it means something. And. If so, how much does that mean Denver really wants to win on Wednesday? Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's something. But <laughs> but I just felt like the mood was good. And that's one of the things that when you're on a Zoom call, you don't know that. You see a yeah. player, and I could say, what mood is that guy in or this guy in? But until you're actually around, you can't just tell, like, what are the vibes? I got to say, this is my read. Maybe you can compare this and contrast what you saw today to what you saw at training camp in San Diego. But I felt like the mood, the personality of the team has been very positive the last couple of days. I think so, too. And honestly, we'll get into this a little bit when we talk about what we heard at practice today. I don't even think this is an over exaggeration, but a lot of it, honestly, I believe has to do with Bones Island. Right. I just do. Maybe. Maybe. I really think he's a vibe changer. Just him alone, individually. He can totally alter the vibe of any team, any room he walks into. Uh, and look, we've talked about it. I really do think it was a reason they drafted him. And you can just tell watching the guys wrap up practice because we only get to see the last five or 10 minutes of it. It's really just guys shooting three pointers and free throws, but he's always doing something. There needs to be a bones cam. Here's a great idea that I'm giving to nugget social for free. Just a ISO bones cam uh, throughout the entire practice. Cause this guy's like dancing, clowning on guys, right. like doing 
I don't even know what he's doing, but he's always doing something. Right. And him alone, I don't think this is the only reason, but I think it's a reason. Him alone can change the vibe of any room he walks into. Well, this yeah, definitely, and this is what Will Barton told me about Jokic several years ago, that he sort of brought that energy and it made training mm. camp fun and made these dog, he called them the dog days. Um, but I think it's Bones' first of all, I think it's his natural personality. I mean, he really does just radiate. All the questions today are about, but I mean, every really the last couple of days, everybody, you know how there's like the core... Who's who's there like every time? There's you know DNVR, Ryan Blackburn, Mike yeah. Singer, pretty much it, and then and then like Dempsey and, and Wingy. But then there's always a rotating like one new person that comes. You can tell they just they go maybe once every two or three weeks or whatever. But that person, there's one of those every single time, and they all ask the five. They have to get all five of their Bones questions yeah. in. And so well, Bones is the story right now. He is now. the story through three preseason games. He is the top number one. Clearly, he's the top story so far. So yeah. I mean, you got to get him in, A, because he's been the story, but B, because he's just fun to talk about. And he has some great sims. And, and let's get into what he had to say, because I thought he was the most interesting today. <laughs> I, might, I might say that every time yeah. he talks. But I thought he was the most interesting today in that I, I, I'm going to start with a question I asked him, because it, it's a thing I always wonder about young players. When, I, when you're playing basketball at a high school level, you feel like you know more than you don't. This is true of all things in life. I think especially as an 18-year-old in high school, you feel like you know things about everything, right? Mm-hmm. And then if you go up a level and then you go to college and you realize, oh, wow, there's so much more about the game I didn't, I didn't know. I, I didn't realize. I just didn't know I didn't know it. And it turns out in high school I knew 1% of basketball. And I asked Bones about that phenomenon, basically, and about how much of his experience so far in training camp the last two weeks has been educational about the game. Yeah. And his answer was so great because not only did he say, yes, I thought I knew everything, and then I, he, and he compared it to college just as I did, but the way he, he phrased it, and I wish I, had, I, I wish I had it written down, but he said something about there's so much more that the game has to offer. That I'm discovering that there's so much more that the game has to offer, and that's been part of the fun part. And I just love that because we're going to use the magic word. He's a hooper. Hoopers <laughs> love the game of basketball. At least it wasn't me today. At least it wasn't you. Hoopers love the game of basketball first and foremost, and I think that's him. And so I imagine a guy like him who just wants to learn and wants to be around it. When you open up a whole new universe of possibilities and terminologies and schemes and movements and this and that, I've got to imagine it's pretty exciting. And he basically, I didn't even lead him to that direction, but he basically said that that in his answer. And I just thought it was so cool. Yeah, you just get the sense that he's enjoying the rookie learning curve. Even though he has played well, there's obviously so much about the game and the NBA game in particular that he needs to learn. And you feel like he's just enjoying the process of sinking his teeth into it. He had this story today about how after the Minnesota game, he was really down. He texted Michael Malone about wanting to watch film with him. And that happened this morning, apparently. Monday morning, he sat down for a film session uh, with Michael Malone to go through what he did well in that Minnesota game, what he didn't do well. He also said today that he loves just diving into the film on his own. So... When guys around the team, Monte Morris said this, just talking with players and staffers and coaches, they've said this too. Bones Highland is a sponge. He asks questions. He wants to know what he does right, what he does wrong. Um, he's just loving, like I said, the process. And he of- mentioned that part of about asking, though, today. He, he mentioned that. That's part of the education. He's, he's like, there's yeah. so many different plays or things or uh, things I don't know. And he's like, that's why I'm going to the coach so much. Because we've heard the other side. We've heard Malone say he's asking a lot of questions or players. He's asking a lot of questions. But now we know why. He's like, it really is. I don't. It's almost like if you were a, a classically trained uh, pianist or musician. And then all of a sudden someone's like, here's rock and roll. And you're like, wow, I didn't even <laughs> know music had this other sure. f- art form. Sure. And I, I almost feel like that's where he's at right now. Well, I talked to him about this at training camp the biggest thing that he's had trouble picking up on, and this is probably the case for any rookie, because when you're comparing the NBA to college, this is probably one of the biggest differences. The Nuggets offense, there's very few like set play calls. A lot of it's read and react stuff. In college, it's not always the case. And he told me that that's kind of the biggest thing that he's had to really ask about and uh, talk with people and watch film on is, you know, the read and react stuff on both ends of the floor. So um, when it comes to that, like, yeah, that's that's a new frontier right. in, in NBA basketball compared to college. Right, right. What else stood out to you about him and his media availability today? He was a long one. He, he's, he, I think he enjoys talking to media more than most players. Yeah. That'll change, by the way. I'm sure yeah. that'll change over time. Yeah. It, it's funny because we talk about him being this 
Um, Malone called him what, what like some sunshine. Like right. you always have to have some sunshine at practice. So he's this ray of of sunlight. He's this ray of sunshine, and he honestly like when I'm talking about this Bones ISO cam, it's a real thing because the guy's always doing something ridiculous, and the craziest part about it is it none of it's fake. It's all like a hundred percent legit. Right. And you could say like, Oh, he's a rookie. You know, he wants everybody to like him. He wants to try to bring energy to the gym. And yeah, he's doing all those things, but he even said today, like, this is just how I've always been. Right. Um, I've always been this super energetic guy who can brighten a room up, uh, talking about how he always asks coaches questions and stuff. He said, he's always been a teacher's pet. That's how he put it. Like he's always been uh, the guy to buddy up to coaches and kind of always be in their ear and stuff. So everything that we've seen has been like 100% authentic. Yeah. Like, like that's the other thing. This isn't an act right. at all. It's authentic. It was interesting too. Another thing that happens at practices is all the media comes together. So we're t- you're, you're kind of getting everybody else's takes. I don't think there was a single person who thought Bones – won't be in the rotation or shouldn't be in the rotation. I think they all understand the the situation. Like, okay, he's a rookie. He's got to mm-hmm. kind of beat out certain veterans that maybe got penciled in before camp. But I think they all were pretty confident that at some point, if not right away, Bones Highland would be one of the 10 players that are playing. I mean, I would have been pretty surprised, man. Like, looking back at the draft, like on that night. Right, right. I, I would have been surprised. But I'm saying right now, I right. would be surprised if he wasn't. I mean, it's... It's not that he has had a good game. It's that every summer league game, every preseason game has more or less looked the same in terms of what it yeah. is he's capable of doing. And you look around at some of the other guys that are competing for those minutes, they are definitely up and down. And that's what you think when you think of a rookie, you think consistency is the thing you sacrifice. He's been the more consistent one, in my opinion. I would be very surprised if he's not playing rotation minutes. On, on opening, opening night? night? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, how could you not throw him out there? Yeah. I mean, throw him out there and let him fail. And then you can say, all right, we, we scale things back a little. You know, maybe get him some G League run. Um, maybe, you know, he's a sit, more of a situational guy. But at least at the start of the season, if you can throw him in there and you get some of the stuff from him that you've gotten this preseason and then you run with that, like, that's really something. Like, or if he fails right when you throw him in, that's okay too. But at the beginning of the season, yeah, like opening night, he should be in there. I'd, mm-hmm. I'd be surprised if he didn't. And I'm not saying he's going to play 25 minutes, right. 10 minutes, you know, with the bench unit, end of the first quarter, beginning yeah. of the second quarter, maybe even like throw him in with the starters at the end of the first half, yeah. see how he does. I think he'll be in there. It'll be I an, feel pretty confident in it'll that. It'll be an interesting uh, an interesting call. The one thing I will say is Malone really does seem to to enjoy him, just really like his spirit. I mean, he is a Malone guy, and that, that matters. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Nikola because he was there. Uh, I can't, I've always called him Nikola, even though it's Nikola, and I don't know if I should change. or He said he doesn't mind. Of course not. I mean, <laughs> Nikola, it's it's whatever. I mean, we're seven years into this. We're thing. several years into this. <laughs> this so, is like, are you going to add a jump shot? Yeah. In your seventh nope, season I'm in not the doing NBA. it. I'll say Joker. So Joker spoke today. First time in 18 months getting to be face-to-face with him. I yeah, was that's, so, that's a good point. Actually. I was so excited. Him, not so much. <laughs> <laughs> he had, you know his vibe on Media Day when he was asked, so like, do you guys think you're going to be a contender this year? Or are you going to have another MVP season? Right. He's like, I don't know. We could be good. We could be bad. I could be good. I could be bad. Yeah. I don't know. That yeah. was his his vibe today very much. And I couldn't tell the sarcasm level out of him today. It was kind of funny. Like um, some of it, like he was really almost putting down bones. I mean, he comes in and this is sarcastic yoke. We know yoke. Like he comes, he comes in and somebody asked him like, what can he improve on? And he's like, knowing the score at the end of games. <laughs> <laughs> It was almost like a zinger. Yeah. Yeah. A little rookie hazing little rookie from hazing. Joker. Oh. Um, something that Bone said, though, that I thought was cool was after the end of that Minnesota game happened, Bones was down on himself, understandably, didn't like how that game finished. He said that Nicola went up to him in the locker room and was like, dude, it's okay. You played really well. It's just the preseason. Like, it was just a mistake. Those things will happen. You're a big part of what we do. Like, brush it off. You'll be good. I thought that was cool. Yeah. I thought that was the franchise, you know, coming over to the rookie and being like, yo, you're one of us. Don't worry about it. Like, nobody's going to get on you for it. Like, it, it, just brush it off. It's all good. 
I, I thought think, that was cool. I didn't think Yoke likes bones. I mean, he he talked about him being talented. Like he's like he's very you know he he said something like we need what he does or something like that. So I think even he recognizes that he has a role on this team that you yeah. know he provides something of value. Um, was there anything else that stood out from from his discussions today? Um, I mean, not really. We talked about his his kid a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's something he enjoys talking about. He had a real MVP. To an extent. It, it, instead of the KD, the real MVP, he said uh, Natalia's Natalia wife is the, is the no. He said he, she's the the MVP for real. <laughs> MVP for real. He's got his own spin on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I thought that was good. Then then there's Michael Malone. And again, when I say camp had a good personality to it, a positive vibe to it. Sometimes when you only get Michael Malone through a here's here's something I'll say. Michael Malone is very good at using the media. He's, I would say, one of the best. And I know he's mindful of this. I'm not just saying this is a thing we read. I know he is mindful of when I go and talk to the press, I'm not just sharing with them the things they want to know. I'm also sharing – there's also a, a, a way to sort of work things so you can get your message out to the team or message out to other people or whatever. He understands how all those things play. So sometimes on a Zoom, he could come in, grab you this or that, and you can think like – I think this is he's speaking to an audience of one right now, and it's not us. Like he's you know yep. it's speaking to someone else, so you can't tell if he's good mood, bad mood. Today, I thought his mood matched, and really yesterday as well, matched the mood of the team, and that he feel he seemed to me to be relaxed, confident, and you know serious, but also just more laid back than I anticipated. It was a mood of somebody who whose team is zero and three in the preseason, yeah. and desperately wants to get the first win but doesn't want to put pressure on his guys and make them think, oh, we're under pressure to get this first win. So that, I, I cause I agree with you. He joked about how he's the serious one and, and, you know, sometimes he takes things too seriously. And the Keeping It 1000 podcast with George Carl last week, George Carl said it's important. He thinks he always wanted in the preseason to go three and two, something like that. Throw, I think he said four and three, just to have a slight winning record. Cause he wanted, he thought it was important to establish a winning, a winning vibe mm-hmm. around your team nuggets are zero and three and they're zero and three because of guys who are not going to play closing games and doing a horrible job at it these starters have been absolutely fantastic that being said i have to imagine michael malone agrees with that sentiment in some way and that he would love nothing more than to actually win to, on wednesday night but not just because it would feel good but because i think he thinks it's important i do i agree with you and that's why Based on what Malone said today, the starters are probably going to play the most in this next preseason right. game as they have in any of these games so far. This is going to be probably as close as we get to a dress rehearsal. Right. Actually, it's definitely going to be because it's a back-to-back, a yeah, back-to-back in the preseason, which is wild. Um, but the starters are going to play a lot. I think it's the rotations are going to kind of mimic what we might see opening night here on Wednesday. And then Thursday, the last preseason game, that's going to be your throwaway game where it's like, okay, Matt Ryan, or right. not Matt Ryan. He was he was waived, but not really. We can talk <laughs> about that. Um, all right, like Devon Reed, like you're going to play a bunch today. So um, I agree. Like he definitely wants a win. Also, the Nuggets have been a pretty good preseason team under Michael Malone. Like I don't know how much you want to, how much stock you want to put in that, but they've always gone 500 or better. And I think in. 2019 2020 yeah they were five and two in the preseason so they've always been a strong preseason team um last year they were two and one just only three preseason preseason games but yes they definitely want to get a win i 100 percent believe that yeah do you i want to go to matt ryan though real quick because you had a report today i mean he was waived by the team it's kind of a yeah. weird circumstance so there are these things called exhibit 10 deals in the nba where if you sign somebody to it you get their g league rights So what teams do, and this happens throughout the league, you pretty much sign a guy to an Exhibit 10 deal and then waive him. So he's not like on your 20-man roster, but you still have his G League rights. Okay. So from what I was told, that's what happened with Matt Ryan. Um, That's what's going to happen with like Georgie, uh, the the guy who's on an Exhibit 10 deal right now. uh, I'm told his preferred nickname is G-Baby. G-Baby. Okay. Okay, so we we'll are going to call him? a grown man baby. I am. I don't, I have no problems <laughs> with it. I have. I call a grown man bones. <laughs> like, come on, man. Michael Malone doesn't call a grown man baby G. Apparently. Hey, man. Um, but yeah, you wave him and then you sign somebody else to the exhibit ten deal, which is what they did with baby G today. Um, G baby, not oh, baby G. G baby. G baby. G baby. Way, way tougher. Uh, but yeah, Matt Ryan is going to be in Grand Rapids allegedly, yeah. or from what I was told. Yeah. So, 
That should be fun. I've heard some good reviews about Matt Ryan. Same. And that's what I was going to say is I, he's when you start talking about filling out the G League roster, like, all right, there's you know nothing against these guys. Uh, Davon Reed, Tark Black. Like, I'm like, okay, I know what those guys do. They're hustlers. And they're not I mean, Davon Reed, Mr. Mr. Dependable. Dependable. We all know what he does. Yeah. Uh, Tark Black is going to be like a hustler. You know, he's going to try to he's going to grab an enormous amount of rebounds. He's so sure. strong. I know I know those guys is gay. Matt Ryan, I don't. I just know he's a shooter. Like a, yeah. a a knockdown shooter. So when you think G League, what's more fun than guys that get he's hot six from three? seven two? He's pretty big. He's not like a stick. Yeah, he's, he's got some muscle on him. So he has a chance to be. We we always think about who's the find, the guy that maybe steps up and ends yeah. up playing some real. I mean, he it could be him. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> so that's that's the wrap out on that. Uh, let's take our first break though. On the other side, we're gonna start getting to the mailbag questions. Can't wait, uh, guys! Make sure to pick up some Mile High City Copper Lager from Breck Brew. This week, uh, you can pick some up at your local liquor store. Pick some up at the Breck Brew Farmhouse. If you ever go out there, uh, great food, great drinks, of course. They've got a couple different bars out there at the farmhouse. A great place to spend a day with the fam. Uh, so you can pick up Mile High City Copper Lager there. Uh, sometimes your local grocery store has it. Your local liquor store probably has it as well. Uh, you can't miss it. It's got that Nuggets blue can with the Nuggets logo on it. Great beer to drink during any type of occasion. Maybe you're watching a Nuggets game this week. Maybe you're drinking some while watching the show right now. Uh, pick some up from Breck Brew this week. Also, guys, Sexy Pizza. If you go to one of our Broncos tailgates, and if you haven't, uh, they're awesome. You're missing out. The Broncos are home this weekend again, I believe. So we've got a tailgate lined up uh, at Mile High. We have free sexy pizza Man. on our tailgate. This week's tailgate, by the way, going to be awesome. I'll be there for this one. I've had to miss two weeks of Broncos because I was doing stuff. But this mm-hmm. week, I will be back at the tailgate. I cannot wait. Yeah. Like, all you can drink Breck Brews and the sexy pizza. Then games, cornhole. We got the TV. I, it's going to be so fun. It's Raiders week. Like, the Broncos desperately need it. Come on out. I'm yeah. telling you, we even have the party bus. Like paying for parking downtown you oh know, for the God, game is a drag and the and the traffic. Instead, I'm telling you, this is the best. Even if you don't want to go to the tailgate, it's the best deal. Go yeah. come park here on Colfax where there's nothing but parking. Ride the party bus. You get a drink while you're on the party bus. And then you arrive at the tailgate where you get free food and drink. I mean, come on, man. It's yeah. the best. I'm telling you, it is the best. It's the best. Bre- free Breck or Breck Brew you get when you sign up for the tailgate as well. Yep. Uh, just go to the DMVR Sports Twitter page if you want more information about how to sign up. I'm not even going to the game and I'm going to the tailgate. I mean, <laughs> honestly, I that every time. That, it's so freaking hot these days. Like <laughs> Sometimes those games are rough to sit through. Um, but yeah, go to the tailgate, uh, sign up, get a ticket, sexy pizza, Breck Brew. Uh, great time. Just it's Like we've said, it's just literally us doing this at the tailgate. We're just hanging out, talking Broncos, talking Nuggets. Uh, it's We're a just great guys, time. Talking. <laughs> yeah. guys talking. Guys talking about sports. If you don't go to the tailgate, if you're not local, um, or, or if you just live in Denver and can't make it out to the tailgate, order up from Sexy Pizza. They got a couple locations in Denver. Really great pizza, great uh, sides too, great garlic knots, great salads as well. Uh, so yeah, check it out. Awesome. Just writing a quick note. Just got a little, send a little text here, guys. Just hold on. <laughs> oh, oh. It's mailbag. I wish we had the little Eric's head. I'll have to make a new graphic kill of Eric's head and the <laughs> <laughs> uh, splat. Maybe I'll add a splat. Okay, uh, let's go to our mailbag, Kale. You've curated. We here. Here we have from Snoichi, super fan, super DNVR uh, fan. What are everyone's on the show? So now it's just us two. Uh, like maybe a stretch, but would be really cool goal for the season could be player specific, but goals outside of team achievements, titles, for example, Michael Porter goes to the all-star game or busy bones breaks. One of the nuggets, rookie records. Love you guys. Love you as well. What do you have? Do you have a, uh, uh, sort of under the radar sort of personal thing yeah. you're hoping? Hits? Yeah. It's one we were talking about at nuggets practice today. Will Barton has Man. a chance to become the Nuggets' all-time three-point leader. Yes. He, he has a chance to, to this year break the mark for most three-pointers made as a Denver Nugget. Yep. And if he plays, what were we saying, 70-something games this year, he's going to do it. <sighs> well, He's going to be number one on that list most likely if he stays healthy and you know has the season we're kind of expecting him to have. So it, I can check it. Yeah, pull it up while I'm, while I'm talking here. So I don't. It, it's actually like right in line with his career average, especially for the last two or three seasons. 
if he were to play like 75 games or something, which is tough because I don't think playoff numbers factor into that for whatever reason. That's mm-hmm. like a regular season number. So it's going to be right there. I actually think it could become a storyline towards the end of the season if it's like he needs to average three threes a game over five games. Like I could see Will Barton just like yeah. launching these off, you know, because how cool would it be to be number one? I think that's a cool one for two reasons. One, do you remember? I don't. Maybe this was when I was over at Denver Stiffs. It was prior to joining here. People were asking, "What's the core of the Nuggets?" And I put Will Barton in the core. I said, "For me, Will Barton is a core member." Yep. Will Barton's been here what seven and a half seasons now, longer than anybody else. And I remember when I said that back in the day, people were like, "I don't know, I don't know, guys." He has been here seven and a half seasons. If he plays out the remainder of his contract, it'll be eight and a half. Just forget about this era. How many Nuggets across any era? Played eight seasons for the Denver Nuggets. It's a short list. It's like an extremely and short especially list. Especially in today's NBA, that list is going to become shorter and shorter. Um, yeah. um, I've got the leaderboard pulled up uh, right now. Number one, the leader in all time three pointers made as a Denver Nugget, J.R. Smith. Okay. 768. Okay. So this is where it gets interesting because two is Jamal Murray. Right. At 673. Right. He's about 100 behind, a little right. less. Number three is Will Barton at what? with 647. Okay. 647. So JR's at 768. So Will Barton's at 647. 121. Let's divide this by 72 games. Let's assume he misses. So he needs 1.7 three-pointers right. per game. If he stays healthy, he's probably going to break it. Let me see. I'm, I'm looking it up. What's his career? Do you see his career average in front of you? Let yeah, me see. Three-pointers made. It's 1.8. <laughs> one, or 1.2 is career average, but over the last year... Three, last year was 1.8. Let's do the last four seasons. Year before 1. Was 1. 1.9, 1.6, 1.9, 1.8. So he's actually right around what he would need for 70 games. And again, I think 70 is a, is a solid goal for Will. I, yeah. I imagine he'll sit out about 10. It's going to be close. It could it's be It's going to be like really, really close. It's like, oh, we got this last game of our season. We're locked into a playoff seed. Why don't we just rest you guys for a couple and Will Barton's like, no way. I can break the freaking <laughs> record. I don't know how long you know I'm going to be here in Denver. I want that record. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna say the final week it becomes a storyline. It becomes I think a storyline, right? And I think we're going to be looking at every week, Barton three and be like, was that a four? Or was that a good one? <laughs> it, because percentage, it's not going to matter. Right, it's three right, pointers right. made. Yeah, that's cool. It'd be interesting to hear if that's one of his. Maybe tomorrow you can ask him about mm, that. If that's like maybe. a thing that would mean a lot to him if he became the all time. Yeah, it's a good one. Uh, three point leader. Um, so that's that's a really good one. I would say, um, you know, it's tough because like Jokic was the MVP. So to come up with one for Jokic is tough. It would be cool if he averaged a triple double. It'd be really cool if he did yeah, that. Yeah, that just as really a weird cool. rounded number thing. I think it would be great. So yeah, maybe, maybe that's one. That would be cool. The, here's another one I will say. I'd love for the Nuggets to be a top two seed. Obviously, it'd be great for the Nuggets just because it's great seeding. But I just think it would be something cool about if you don't have Murray for this entire time and you still make a great regular season record. It just would turn a lot of heads, I think. I would just love to see the excuses for not having Nikola Jokic in the MVP conversation at would, that point. They would be too good. It yeah. would be really, it'd be really fun. If Bones gets playing time out of the gate, and just looks like one of the best rookies all season. That would be really fun. Well, look, my bet for uh, Bones Highland being rookie of the year, I would I would not mind that. I also think hitting. We're all I, in on it by now. I think I make like a couple thousand dollars on a twenty dollar <laughs> bet if it hits. So I'll go for that one. <laughs> yeah, uh, even bigger than the uh, the Jokic one. All right, what yeah. else we got, Kale? Good question there. After three preseason Sorry. games, what is uh, something you've seen that you would like to see improve by the regular season opener other than TDs? T- turnovers. Oh, turnovers. <laughs> <Other than> turn- <laughs> I was like, Jokic, Hail Marys? Uh, number two, something that you've seen that you hope carries Ooh, into question. the regular season opener. All right. I'll, let me go first on this one sure. because I'm actually going to start with number two on this. I thought the tempo has been great, and I haven't checked the numbers on the pay- on, on the pace. But I really feel like, and this is a Bones Highland thing. I yes. think he pushes the pace really, really well. I think guys like PJ Dozier do. This is going to come up. Uh, you, by the way, guys, our player preview series rolls on. We had Marcus Howard earlier today. We got Faku Composo. That'll be right after the show, right at three o'clock. That's going to premiere. So as soon as we'll, we'll wrap up by three for sure, so you guys can roll right over into that. Start checking those out. The Faku one has the list in it, and going forward, most of the guys will have some type of film study breakdown on them. So you're not going to want to, this is the time we're almost one week away from the real opener. So you guys are not, you're going to want to catch up on all of these videos. We put a lot of work into them, but that's the thing that I talked about was the tempo and also how Aaron Gordon 
and Michael Porter grabbing and going has been a real weapon for the Nuggets. Like mm-hmm. the fact that Jokic, Porter, Gordon can grab the ball and and run with it up the court has really lent to a lot of of three point shots, kick out three pointers in transition, which uh, which I love, and I just think it'd be good for the team. Yeah, my number two would just be Aaron Gordon's mentality. Mm. Um, seems like he's just been in attack mode. He's confident in his shot, and I don't think people are talking about it enough, but he's going to score a little bit more, I think, than than what he did last year yeah. and the expectations that people have for him. Um, because like the Nuggets need him to. I, I really get the sense that Denver's and Michael Malone are empowering him to yeah. be like, look for your offense, look to be aggressive, look to shoot it when you're open. And last year he came here and he was just trying to fit in and not do anything too crazy. Um, not really ruffle anyone's feathers. Now, you know, he, he's had a full off season uh, being a Denver Nugget. He was here in training camp in the preseason. I think he's going to let his uh, wings fly a little bit or mm. spread his wings there a little bit. Let his wings yeah, fly. Yeah, gonna, that's the old saying. He's going <laughs> to spread his wings a little bit and just really look to to score more. I, I do. but and I, and I like kind of how his approach has been this preseason. I'm just noticing with this camera angle, my hands look enormous. <laughs> so do mine. <laughs> the, the, I mean, I have big hands to be good with. But like, yeah, hands. like they look like really. Huge. Sorry. Um, I, there's a couple things you can go here. Another one would be Bones Highland playing. Like that's yeah. a thing I would love. The preseason has been so fun for Bones, and if, and there would be just a little bit of fun, um, d- deficiency if like Bones sure. doesn't play on opening night or if he does, you know, whatever. So definitely him, uh, him still playing. If you go things that you don't want to see. Turnovers obviously would be a, a really a, a really loud one. Um, hmm. I mean, Monte Morris's play has been a little bit underwhelming so far. That would be one I would. I mean, the bench is the bench, is wow. uh, an issue. Yeah, the bench it's, is an issue. It's a big question mark. I think. Yeah. Um, how do like the Nuggets better balance the starters in the bench? Don't get too deep into this because this is our next question. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'll table that. Why don't we go to it? That was a yeah. great question, though. Why don't we go to the bench one then? Uh, yeah, don't get too in the weeds here. Boom. If the Nuggets... Wait, wrong one, sorry. Oh. <laughs> that looks like a fun one, though. <laughs> uh, Weota says, if the Nuggets... That's the same one. Uh, well, uh, there we go. That's That's the one we want. With Jamal out... With Jamal out, do you stagger Barton or Porter with the bench here to give them some juice and scoring? I think you do. Um, <laughs> this is just like one of those funny things we debate every single year. Like, Obviously, the Nuggets starters are so good that there's no way the bench outperforms them at all or like looks better than them. The Nuggets just have, have had such a good starting unit over the last couple of years. But it, it's probably my number one concern right now, to be totally honest, especially if it's a bench lineup of Faku, Bones, or Austin Rivers, PJ Dozier, Jamichael Green, and Jeff Green. I don't know how that five is going to be. I think it's a solid group. All those guys are NBA caliber rotation players. Um, but I just think it could look a little clunky from time to time, uh, or, or maybe even a little bit more than from time to time. So it's honestly my, my biggest question mark right now. Here's one reason it's not too concerning for me just yet. If you look at plus minus for the preseason so far, I know it's a little bit crazy to say, but Aaron Gordon has played three games. He has a plus 38. Yeah. That's over a plus 10 per game. And he's only playing what? uh, He's got 70 minutes. So, you know, he's not playing that many minutes. He'll he'll play even more than that. Michael Porter has played two games. He's a plus 30. Yeah. Jokic has played two games. He's a plus 24. The guy, those three are going to be on the court a lot and mostly together. And when they've been on the court, it's actually been more dominant than we've actually even shared. And part of this cuz it's preseason, these numbers are noisy. Like some guys their numbers you know are, are through the roof for this reason or that reason. But those guys in particular have looked good and they barely even played all together yet. And they haven't even played with Will Barton, who I think is going to make them even even better. And Monte Morris hasn't really been great so far. So this this so I look mm-hmm. at it and I go the starters are going to be the big thing. But you're right that the bench was deflating at portions last year. They got really got better at towards the end of the season. But early on, they could be a little bit uh, deflating in that if you had a 10-point lead and bench comes in and blows yeah, it all in like that, two That's minutes. what I'm saying. The starters are, are going to be great. They're going to get out the 10-point leads. But last year, it was like, oh, here comes the bench. Let's see if they can keep this lead. And sometimes they couldn't. And that was with like a 10-point cushion. Right. So I, I'm with you. The stars are going to get out to a great start most nights. Um, it's, I think they'll defend better once PJ's there, though. 
Because the scoring is a is a mystery to the, me. The scoring's my concern. I'm not actually that worried about the defense. So let's say Barton plays tomorrow, which would be important. You're going to yeah. have Monte and Barton start in the backcourt. You're yeah. going to have Porter, Gordon, Jokic. That's never going to change. What do you want to see behind them tomorrow? What would be the lineup you would go to the first bench rotation? Well, I would like to see some sort of stagger. To, to, well, to they'll, be honest, they'll, they'll I would like... there will be a stagger. But I'm saying the ten guys, like I think tomorrow Malone's going to go to ten guys, and then yeah. somebody's going to get cut out, and then I imagine that so, in the second half yeah. they'll do something. Else. The five I want to see with the bench is Faku, Bones, Highland, right. Dozier, and the two Jay Greens. Me too. That I, I think no that's, question. Yeah, it's it's pretty easy for me. Austin Rivers is the odd guy out. Um, but I, I would like to see at some point them see what they can do with a stagger where it's Porter as the guy on that unit right. or Will Barton as the guy on that unit because the five that I just said, who's your go-to guy? It's Bones Highland, right. like to be honest. And, and like, could the Nuggets center their bench offense around a rookie? I mean, it's Bones Highland, so maybe. But I don't you kind of wonder so, what the pecking order is going to be with that group. But I don't think it's so centered around him that – like there are lineups where it's like okay everything revolves around this guy. I don't think it's like that. I just think he's the best at taking advantage of yeah. a equal opportunity system that they would put in place. It's not, but I just remember last year where they can like, score. Those five guys <laughs> will get on the floor and it's like no one really wants to shoot. Yeah. Like we're all we're working for a great shot, but yeah. nobody really wants to take over. It's it was clunky last year and it seems like um a, a similar like feel with this Five man bench unit. No question about it, man. Um, I do you think we will see that tomorrow? That five? Yeah. I do too. Yeah. But look, Would we, you be disappointed if we didn't? A little bit. If it was Austin for Right, that's for what Bones. I mean. Yep. Yeah. For sure. For sure. I mean, they, they've been going eleven or twelve deep, you know, so far. I don't think that's happening tomorrow. I or Wednesday. I kind of feel like that one will be like you said, a dress rehearsal, and yeah. I think that'll be it. I mean, I could be wrong, but we'll we'll find out. Um, all right, what else we got? Should we take another break, or we got we got time for another one? Let's do another one. All right, let's take a, a break. break. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a break. We'll get a bunch on the in the in the final segment. Uh, let's do it, guys. As you know, we're sponsored by Ball across the entire DMVR network, as in Ball Arena, as in the aerospace technology company, also is in the world's largest aluminum can and packaging manufacturer. Ball has actually been leading global sustainability efforts for decades for decades and ball actually reached out to us and they need help here in their denver metro plant in their golden plant they have floor manufacturing positions for production technicians and other roles available uh why you might ask well they need to make more cans so in 2020 ball made over 101 billion cans 101 billion uh, and they're probably going to make even more this year so they're hiring production technicians to their golden colorado plant if you want more information, jobs.ball.com um, and search for Golden, or you can text Golden to 77222. Of course, Ball makes 8, 12, and 16 ounce can sizes for all kinds of liquids. They make cans in over 30 different sizes at facilities across the world. Again, te- text jobs.ball.com and search for Golden, or go to jobs.ball.com and search for Golden, or you can text Golden to 77222 for more information uh, if you go to manscape.com and you're a listener of this podcast use the code dnvr that's going to save you 20 percent. you're also going to get free shipping on all your manscape products uh, like i said when you go to manscape.com and use the code dnvr you're going to get 20 percent off plus free shipping uh, check out the performance package 4.0 you get the lawnmower 4.0 uh, you get the travel bag you get other uh other little gadgets and stuff uh deodorant like you get everything that you need to have the proper manscaping experience with that performance package uh 4.0 like i said it comes with the lawnmower 4.0 uh comes with uh, those cutting edge ceramic blades um it comes with the weed whacker a total game changer a lot of people say uh, so go to manscape.com use the code dnvr you're going to save 20 percent every time Plus free shipping. Uh, that's when you use the code DNVR at manscaped.com. Get 20% off plus free shipping when you use that. Uh, finally, if you're looking for a dentist in the Denver area, check out Green Mountain Dental Group. When you schedule a cleaning, x ray, and exam at Green Mountain Dental Group, you can get a free Sonic Ear toothbrush. Honestly, it's a toothbrush that most dentists out there recommend. It's the top of the line, it's, it's the best of the best. 
Uh, get a free one. Get a free Sonic Gear toothbrush. It's going to last you a long time. Get one when you schedule a cleaning x-ray and exam at Green Mountain Dental Group. They're located 15 minutes from downtown Denver. They're who a lot of us here at DNVR go to uh, to get all our dental work done, get our teeth cleaned, wisdom teeth pulled, cavities filled. Check them out today. All right, here, final segment. We got some more questions to get to. Thanks for these questions, by the way. There's some good ones so far today. What else we got, Kale? Wayota, if the Nuggets roster organized themselves into a FIBA 3x3 tournament, who would be the top trios? Man, I mean Murray and Yoke. We have to start from there. That's the top. That we're that definitely those guys. I mean, come on. I guess it's the big three. Murray, Oak, <laughs> yeah, Murray, Oak and, and Porter say. is pretty unbeatable. It's clearly the big three. They're not guarding anyone though. <laughs> I mean, do you really guard anybody in three on three? Yeah, I guess not really. <laughs> it's, it's kind of an offensive game. Um, okay, what about this though? What if you could only build a team out of around one of those guys? You can only have one of three the big on three, three on your team. You need two other guys plus a member of the big three. So Yoke and two other guys. Yeah. Jamal and two other guys. I'd say it's probably still Yoke. I mean, come on. He's unguardable. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Yoke, um, Bones. <laughs> 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 um, and AG, I'm taking a defender. Yeah. You are. You are probably. <laughs> Who are yeah. you going? Actually, maybe I would have gone Barton instead of Bones. Barton's got the height. It's got the experience. Probably Barton, Bones, and Yoke. Barton Bones Yoke. If I'm building around Porter, par- Porter Bones Barton. If I'm building around <laughs> Murray, Murray Bones Barton. <laughs> Porter, I'd go Porter Gordon Barton. I like There's shooters no on my three, really... on three team, though. You need shooters. Yeah, you do need some shooters. Jermichael Green maybe could be versatile defender, <laughs> fill in the gap spot. Jeff Green. You think about it. What are you really doing with that role? You're just having one guy at space while you run the Murray Jokic two man game or something. Yeah. And Porter's like the best at that. I mean, he's gonna yeah. knock it all. You down. just want your top three hoopers. Is <laughs> is honestly what you want. With Murray, man, who would you give Murray? There's no great rim rollers on the Nuggets this year, so I'd so like you, Jeff Green's your best. Yeah, roller. he's your just he's your best roller. I don't know if that's going to be super dynamic. Yeah, I guess I'd probably no, no Aaron. I'd give him Gordon. You want Gordon? I'd give him Gordon and Barton probably. Yeah, alrighty. That's tougher than I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, but it's actually simpler than I thought it would be. It's the big three <laughs> if you're using the regular guys. Yeah, I feel like it's a pretty good one too. All right, what else we got? Miroslav, the homie, says for entertainment purses of purposes, read the following Serbian names. What the hell is this? Hazy? Dude, this is not cool. <laughs> uh, I can't even see that far. I'll go. Yeah, screen's Lil- really blurry. Liliana right now. I can't really see it. Lasic. I would say Liliana Lasic. Kun Gojkovic. Gojkovic. Kun Gojkovic. Uh, then I'd go Jarko. Jarko. Or is that Darko? Jarko Donchoy. <laughs> uh, Slavoyib Muslin. And Voya Ubi Parip. <laughs> How did we do? These, these probably mean like really bad words. Yeah, he probably Serbia. just got us to like curse or something. This is yeah. going to go up on that Serbian TV channel. I don't know how this one made it through the filter. Hazing, not appreciated. Bullying, not appreciated at the DNBR Nugget Show. All right, what else we got? Gregor Peterson, what's a Nuggets player's next name that's not a thing that you would like to see become a thing? Ooh, this is a good one. I mean, number one is Mr. Dependable. <laughs> Mr. Dependable. <laughs> I love Mr. Dependable. It's Dave on Reed's nickname. I don't uh, know the story behind it. I-, I would love to know. Maybe I'll ask him one of these days. Yeah. Mr. Dependable's <laughs> top notch, though. <laughs> it's also kind of like a not cool thing. Like, oh. Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know. It's not tough. It's not this. It's like perfect attendance. You know, it's not like an award. You're always there. You're always there. (laughs) Never missed a practice. Oh, man. There's got to be one. There's got to be one. I'm trying to go through the list here. You already got Bones. I think Bohai. Bohai is one. Like, Bones is such a good nickname, but Bones deserves uh, 70 nicknames. He just deserves so many. And I think Bohai. Bones is not even really a nickname. It's kind of just his name. It kind of is. Yeah. Nobody's calling him Nashawn. Mr. Nugget is also one. Like, it would be cool. Like, we say Mr. Nugget. And Nuggets fans have started to say, like, that's become a thing. But it'd be cool if... Monte uh, apparently knows he's Mr. Nugget, too. Yeah. Oh, really? I've heard. Yeah. <laughs> so, see, I, this is the thing. I would love to see somebody refer to him as Mr. Nugget. I think that would be cool. Yeah. 
Maybe Malone. Like just one day, like, just well, no, no, that's no, why he's Mr. Nugget. Here. When Malone's giving him a game ball, he's like, "This game ball goes to <laughs> Mr. Nugget." <laughs> I don't know why I don't like Piano Man for Zeke. I don't know why. Yeah, I'm not feeling that one either. <laughs> not really feeling yeah. it. Does Vlaco have one like the hammer? <laughs> the body? <laughs> Actually, it should be the body. The Vlatko body. the body chanchar. I like that. Does Peter have any good ones? Uh, hard, bird man. hard rock. He's bird man. <laughs> He's bird man because he posts a picture of a bird. <laughs> um, chicken bones. Okay. Hey, so Zarko. Somebody, or Jarko. Yeah, Darko maybe. I don't know. Um, all right. What else we got? Last one. Solomon Matthias says, do you guys ever think about what's stopping MPJ from shooting like 60% every night. from three? I think he could actually do it. Like I'm literally in shock every time he misses. I am also in shock when he misses open ones. Yeah. This is Eric's corner, right? This is D line's thing that the human, for whatever reason, humans can only shoot around 40 ish percent. Although it's not really true. We have guys last year who, who Joe Ingles shot 50%. Joe Harris was Joe right Harris. under 50% too. Yeah. I think part of it is that to shoot that, you have to, one, be on a great team where you're an afterthought. Yeah. And then, two, you have to be uh, – your shot selection is pretty tight, right? Like you're not taking difficult ones. And Michael Porter, I don't think that would be good for him. I think it's good that he takes – there's auxiliary benefits to some of the difficult shots he makes. One is he's really good at making them. But another another is just that it makes teams panic uh, against him. And I think we'll see more and more of that this year. But that being said – He's a career 44.5% three-point shooter, and I'm not convinced he's not close to that number. Like, Absolutely. even as you scale up. Yeah. Like, I, 42% as you start to get more and more difficult, where he'll have seasons where he's hot or cold or stretches he's hot or cold. But I think he might – I think the baseline for a small number of players is actually above 40%, I think, and I think he's one of them. Honestly, I think he could shoot 50% from three. I really do, 50? man. 50? I think he could approach 50%. High 40s. But here's the thing, here, he here's could, the thing Harrison. Man. Let's imagine it's this, it's January 1st. We're already you know months into the season and he's shooting 50% from three. Don't you feel like he needs to shoot more? Yeah. <laughs> like if, if you're 50% and the scouting report's like, holy crap, he's taking six a game and he's 50%. Yeah. Don't you just shoot nine a game and lower that percentage? You do. But the defense is panicked on every single one. You probably offensive rebound off all three of the extra ones. You do. You do. If Jamal Murray was healthy, I think – Porter's three point per- percentage is just higher right. by default because he's taking less shots overall. But without Jamal, you know, Porter's going to be taking a lot of threes, a lot of contested threes, as he should. He should, like, honestly be taking eight threes a game, maybe even more. That's His how good of a shooter he is. not always perfect. And, and this is the thing that'll show up on the list for Michael Porter uh, episode, but uh, of the preview series. But he, um, for whatever reason, still sometimes it, like he's good at squaring his body up after the jump. He's great at that, but there's still a level of like balance you get when mm-hmm. you when you get your legs under you properly. You get your hips under you, and he's still like even in the preseason had this was the thing last year, but this year I even see it. So there are things that I think like when you say he should be sixty percent, I still think there's things he can do to become a better shooter, yeah, or more consistent shooter, and that's what's crazy. Sixty yeah. percent though, come on. Kevin Durant shot forty five percent from three last year. I mean, what was Michael Porter? 44 and a half at yeah. the same volume. Yeah. How many did he take? Because I think Porter was six and a half. Uh, yeah, I mean, Porter took more. Per per game. Took more threes and, to and was a half four. percent lower. Yeah. And Joe Ingles, 45% on 6.13. So yep. it's same territory same there. And I don't are, think 50% is, is out of the question. Uh, I don't either. All right, Kel, what's our last one? Denver. I don't know. <laughs> Are there two players that haven't been signed or international guys that could replace our end of bench, provide a little security bowl and Howard are my main concerns here. Hmm. I mean, I don't think your main concern should be guys that aren't playing. That's the, that's the yeah. thing bowl. Should he get into the rotation, which at this moment he had that really good first game. I feel like it hasn't been the last two. Haven't been that great. I would be surprised if he was in the rotation. He's more, I would be excited if he was for two or three games. Will he ruin the game for you? I won't be playing enough minutes that I think he would do it like three games in a row. You go 0-3 in those because you can't afford it. Right. But, you know, he is a wild card. I don't know that you worry about those guys just yet. If there were injuries that caused Denver to where it's like we're playing one of Zeke or Bowl or Vlatko extended minutes, I do think the Nuggets might look to buy a player out and try to fill that that spot. But I don't think they would do it for like 
one or two games. Yeah. Because there are guys internationally, and I'm sure the Nuggets have a bunch of these guys circled. Yeah, what are you asking me for? Ask Tim Conley. <laughs> <laughs> but there are guys that they could bring over who are better players and who you would trust in a rotation more, I think at least, than a Bull, than a Marcus Howard. Maybe not more than a Vlatko. I trust Vlatko out there. No. Um, so, yeah, maybe if, if injuries hit or whatnot, that, that would happen. No. Well, that does it for me. That wraps up for today's show, guys. Here in about 12 minutes, we're going to be having the Faku Compasso, hey. the Tiny King uh, Love season it. preview for him. It's a really good one. We kind of got the end of bench players out of the way. <laughs> Those guys are out of there now. Now going we're forward. We're definitely ramping up. We're ramping up. Now going forward, it's all guys that are going to be getting minutes, uh, and they make for really good discussions. I love these videos. They're my favorite thing. We really appreciate it. if you guys just watch those, comment along. We'll be in the chat with you. And, of course, hit that like button. Share them on social media, whatever it is, um, because we put a lot of time into those, and we're just, we, we think there's some really cool stuff, really great content. Thanks, everybody, that joined us in the chat. We're going to be back again tomorrow. Another Nuggets practice, another DMBA show. We'll see you then.